And we're off. First week of the fall market down a little bit more of the same, which is great news for home buyers. In this video, we're going to go over the single family and condo markets in the state of Massachusetts. We'll also do an interest rate update, which, well, that won't be very fun. And then let's round it all out talking about home prices going down. Hi, I'm Jeff Chubb. I'm a recovering investment banker turned real estate agent, and I've sold more than a thousand houses. If you have any questions about the real estate market, then no, I am here to help. The fall market has started. If you are a buyer out there, then I promise you more inventory is coming your way. Don't be discouraged with the limited amount of inventory that you see on the market today. There is more inventory on the way. This week, we had some record highs for the year with inventory, as a matter of fact. But I'm getting ahead of myself. Let's get into it all and jump into the single family market stats. We currently have 4,267 houses on the market. And a new inventory high for 2023 has been hit. If you're a buyer, this is music to your ears. We knew this week was going to be a big new inventory week as people held their listing going into Labor Day to go on the market last week. So look at that jump in inventory. Look, this happens every single year at this time. So the question becomes, will our fall market inventory levels be reminiscent of the fall market in 2022? Or will it be more like 2021? And it was such an impressive inventory build that the inventory gap continued to decrease. We broke that 1,000 unit barrier with there now being 995 fewer single family homes on the market today than today last year. And 617 fewer units when comparing it to the previous lowest levels, which were back in 2021. If you're a buyer, then again, this is fantastic news for you. If you are a seller, then you should see this as some weakness in the marketplace and Take note, we had 1,307 newly listed single family homes this week. The 1,307 homes listed was 8% fewer than this week last year when 1,421 houses came on the market. And the four week rolling average is 803 units, but we knew that this week would come in strong and be well above that four week rolling average. We can also take a very educated guess that next week, the amount of new listings will be strong, but come in a little lighter than this week's number. Now, we knew that under agreements were going to be like this week because under agreements, well, they're a trailing stat. The properties that go on the market will most likely start going under agreement next week. So the 787 single family homes that went under agreement was 16.6% less than the pending activity that we saw the same week last year when 944 single family homes went under agreement. Now, last week under agreements were off by 18.5% and this week they're off by 16.6%. I know I've said it before, but it needs to be repeated. It's this imbalance between new listings and under agreements, which is fueling a rapid decrease in that inventory gap. We were questioning if it would happen as we head into the fall market. And with one week down, it looks to be the case. Now, the four-week rolling average is 832 units. Under agreements were below that rolling average, but we expected this due to Labor Day. There were 566 single-family homes that closed last week for an average sales price of $776,000 and a median sales price of $620,000. And then months of inventory. This is how we determine what type of market that we're in zero to five months. That's considered a seller's market. But the closer you get to zero, the stronger the seller's market that it is. Now this week, months of inventory increased to 1.38 months compared to last week's 1.23 months. Again, we knew that this would happen this week. Like we'd see this jump in months of inventory. But I'm really curious as if we're going to cross a two months of inventory threshold this fall. I'd love to hear your thoughts on that. Can you comment below? Real quick, here's my shameless plug. I just wanted to mention that if you're thinking about buying or selling a home, then it would be a true pleasure to help you. Now, on to the condo market. We had 2,338 condos on the market as of Monday. It's another record inventory week for 2023, which is a great thing for home buyers as they head into the fall market. What was interesting was that even with hitting a record amount of inventory for 2023, the difference between this year and last year for the amount of condos on the market actually, well, it widened. We now have an inventory difference of 275 units, which is up from last week's 243 units and the week before, which was 208 units. And we currently have 494 fewer condos on the market compared to today in the same time period in 2021. There were 669 condos that came on the market with a four-week rolling average of 330 units, and I expect us to be above the four-week trailing average pretty much for the entire September month. We listed 16.5% fewer condos last week than we did in the same week in 2022 when 801 condos came on the market. We actually had some decent balance in the market when compared to the activity of last year, but give me a second. We'll get back to that. 
There are 316 contenders that went under agreement this week. Last week, that number was 317, and the week before, it was 321. So the four-week rolling average is 336 units. Um, we're below that average, but have been in a pretty tight range for the last couple of weeks. This week, last year, there were 376 counters that went under agreement. This means that pending activity was 16% off of what we saw the same time last year. So 16.5% fewer listings were compared to this week last year, and then 16% fewer under agreements. I consider that a pretty balanced week. There were 253 condos that sold this week for an average sales price of $683,000 and a median sales price of $520,000. And then that months of inventory, it increased to 1.75 months from last week to 1.52 months. Any chance you could do me a huge favor it makes a huge difference for me and the channel. If you hit that like button right down there, it just helps with that YouTube algorithm. And well, subscribing, eh, that one doesn't hurt either. Time to talk about interest rates though. And we are back to another bad week for rates. Up and down, up and down. Volatility, it's the name of this game. The bad news, rates were up nearly a quarter of a point this week. The good news, we have not hit the year-long highs. We have some big economic data out this week. All eyes are on the consumer price index data that comes out on Wednesday. And then we have the producer price index as well as the U U.S. retail numbers on Thursday. Will the retail sales numbers show that the consumer has cracked and is pulling back their spending, thereby helping out the inflation numbers? Well, time's going to tell. Let's talk about home prices going down, though. And as you know, I felt that home prices were not going down in 2023. And it looks like that's going to be the case. Too far out to figure out what's going on in 2024. But this article, it really stood out to me. San Francisco is officially America's worst city. One in eight home sellers lose money with an average loss of hundred grand. Ouch. It's not good to be a San Francisco guy or gal. The article states that roughly one of every eight homes sold in San Francisco during the three months ending July 31st was purchased for less than the seller bought it for, up from 5% a year earlier. That's a higher share than any other major U.S. metro and is quadruple the national rate of 3%. Next came Detroit at 6.9%, Chicago at 6.5%, New York at 5.9%, and Cleveland at 5.8%. And this graph really shows the story. And the biggest thing that I picked up on is that the problem has been in the making for quite some time. But let's talk about Boston for a quick second. Is this going to happen next year? Again, it's too far out for me to, well, make any predictions, but compare Boston to San Francisco. When you compare the problems that Boston has to the problems of San Francisco, well, then I feel like you would quickly surmise that, well, our problems aren't so big after all. And I think that is why San Francisco's real estate market, well, sucks. To be frank, it's because the city sucks. Crime is rampant. People are literally going to the bathroom on the streets with a homeless camp on what sounds like every sidewalk. Well, maybe not the sidewalks that are up on those big steep hills. And this is creating a doom loop where businesses are fleeing the city. When businesses flee, so do people. The other cities on that list, Detroit, Chicago, New York, noticing a theme on the places that are seeing housing prices crash? The train is coming off the tracks in those specific cities. There are more problems than just interest rates going up. There are literal structural problems in those cities. Boston doesn't have those problems, for now. I personally think that all major cities need to be very cognizant and be working night and day to keep businesses in the city. Open up the wallet, if need be, because a city needs businesses to sustain itself. And once they are in a doom loop like San Francisco is, then hits a very hard thing to get out of. And by the way, Boston currently has a net outflow of residents, I'm not saying we're perfect. We are just faring the storm up a little bit better than other cities. So to the special people running our fair city, I hope you're listening and well, taking note. And speaking of downward pressure on Boston, we've talked about Airbnbs and how it's said that the downturn in travel will actually cause a demise in the profitability of the units and thereby property valuations. Now, this graph should really make us feel good about the sustainability of housing prices in Boston. Boston was one of the first cities to oblige the hotel industry and their lobby and ban Airbnbs. I have to say that I felt it was absurd at the time, and well, kind of still do. But the city banning Airbnbs way back when may just help ensure that housing prices in Boston could enjoy, well, a soft landing. So I guess, thank you, hotel lobby. Want to talk about your own personal real estate needs? Whether you're looking to buy in the next 9 or 90 days, then I would love to chat with you. Just find out more about your real estate goals. And if you're thinking about possibly selling, well, 
then we can help you traditionally or even offer you a cash offer on your house for a seamless and stress-free sales process. No matter what your situation, we can help you get it done. You can also visit us at youtuberealestateagent.com and just fill in your information and then we'll reach out to you. Any questions or comments about any of this market data? Well, then drop me a line in the comment section below. You take the time to watch the video, so I'm always going to take the time to respond to you. Until next time.